Good evening, grace and peace to you. Welcome to worship this Sunday at Sundays at six or this Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, whenever you are watching and worshiping with us. We are so glad that you are here. I'm coming to you from the church in my office um, alongside a couple pieces of art that we are going to be um, thinking about and looking at later on in the service. But we are so glad that you are here. If you haven't had the chance, um, feel free to go and grab a little bit of bread and a little bit of juice or um, a cracker or a bit of wine or something as we celebrate Holy Communion in a socially distanced way. If you haven't had the opportunity to see it, we've got a newsletter out with information from Pastor Doug about some of our next steps towards regathering, both the Sundays at 6 and morning worship and in small groups, children and youth. And you can check that newsletter out at rightsvilleumc.org. Or if you're not on our email list, then please go ahead and sign up for that. We get all sorts of weekly emails, um, bulletins, other special announcements. Those are not things that you want to miss. And you can email susan at rightsfulumc.org to check that out. Our practice for the month of August for our Vision 2020, as we're calling it, we need better vision now more than ever, is invitation. And that may sound scary or weird or woo-woo or like you're trying to sell something and you did not um, have that summer job in college in which you tried to sell the fancy knives. That is okay. <laughs> Invitation is a Christian practice that just basically says, hey, come with me and see what this is all about. And so every week in the month of August, we're going to be inviting you to share worship, whether that's a morning or Sundays at six. And to invite someone in your life. It is easy now. It may be a neighbor. It may be somebody in your own house that maybe doesn't usually watch worship with you. Maybe you can text a family member or someone who lives nearby. So this week it is a neighbor, someone who lives nearby, maybe a neighbor in your own house. Or just you can just share this worship link or invite folks to watch the, um, to watch the uh, Facebook with you. And now friends, I invite you to take a deep breath in. And would you pray with me? Oh God, who called Moses, who calls us, Lord, we can feel so small in the face of the challenges ahead, in natural disasters, in disasters of our own making, in sickness, both of our bodies and of our souls. God, we pray that you would restore us, that you would use us to help make the world more free, but Lord, that you would help us to see who it is that is really doing the freeing. We ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And now I invite you to join along with Annie Oak in singing our gathering song.
you all. Hello, hello. Hey, Karen. How's hey, that? Rhonda. Peace be with Hi, you. Hi, Christina. And Peace also be with, with you, you as well. <laughs> you guys have such, you, I, I'm sitting here in front of a blank nondescript wall and y'all have like, like Rhonda, yours looks very, yours looks very businesslike and Karen, yours looks very like whimsical. <laughs> Where are you? What have you been up to? That's because Karen well, is the artist and I'm just, um, yeah, I don't have that artistic ability. Well, you and me <laughs> both, Rhonda. <laughs> You're a manager. You have to look business-like. Yeah, with my basketball in the back, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's North Carolina. It's business-like, right? I know. I know. North Carolina basketball is business. Oh my goodness. So where are you? Where are you at, Rhonda? Are you at work? I am at work. I've been at work this whole time. Oh. <laughs> well, mind it's crazy. You work? I work at the Homewood Suites in Mayfair. I'm the manager here and it's it's been crazy. Oh. So we stayed open the whole time and we have um right now we're it's like a typical July summer running a hundred percent and just crazy people. Oh, oh my gosh. So. In the midst have of you been full the whole time? Um we were slow in April, probably like forty percent and then May and June were just kept steadily going up and up and up and mm -hmm. yeah. So it's been interesting. Is it vacationers like usual or just kind of a mix? It's kind of a mix. We're, a, we're an extended stay property. So we have a lot of um, like contractors and stuff that have been here the whole time. FEMA people, believe it or not, from the hurricane still. Still? So, oh my gosh. Still. Wow. So yeah it's crazy so that's kind of what was the 40 percent throughout the whole thing and then now it's building on that leisure leisure group wow but do you trying feel to keep everybody safe? Safe? um yeah for the most part i mean we have we do our temperature checks every morning and we <laughs> we have all the wipes everywhere and sanitation stations it's like galore every time i walk somewhere i'm pushing a thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I feel pretty safe. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you're. Have you had any health. illness among your staff? No, thank goodness. Good. I had a couple scares. Um, somebody's oh. child in daycare was exposed to it, so you know they were afraid they might have been exposed. But so far, so good. So, thankfully. Oh. Yeah. But. Well, how about you, Christina? Are you staying safe? I am trying. I've got my, I've got my, like, now I've got my load of masks that I just sort of, you know, every now and then I just say, well, better time to do a load of masks, you know, yeah. like a load of wipes, but. That's on my list of things to do today. Uh-huh, a load <laughs> of masks. Sanitize my mask. I was going to wear one for y'all. Oh, what is, <laughs> what is your favorite mask look like, Karen? And then tell us about your nook. Oh, yeah, Rhonda's, Rhonda's very professional and business-like, yeah. <laughs> It is. So I have, as you might imagine, fun masks. What are your fun <laughs> masks have any look like? Me. Well, they just have patterns and color. And did you, did you make them? I made some and I bought some. And I That's have some, you know, like yours with just the surgical looking ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a whole fleet of them. Oh, please. Oh, it's like, you that. know, you can't buy anything else. I'll get, I'll get a new mask. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have some great ones, Christina. I have been gifted them by some folks. And then I bought some over at my friend's store, Swahili Coast in downtown Wilmington. And so they are made by folks in Tanzania and Zimbabwe. And then they donate one to someone in that area. So it's made by artisans. It's kind of like a little um, fair trade shop. But then my, my friend Kristen also has been sewing masks and Linda Chapman from our church sewed us some black masks and white masks to go for <laughs> liturgical purposes. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. And what have you been up to, Karen? What is, tell us about your nook. I love your chair right there. Um, well, this is like my reading corner. 
-hmm. and actually usually my chair is kind of turned the other way um but the glare from the window was too much <laughs> yeah so uh, it, this is um this is Anna's old bedroom mm -hmm. and I come in here and it's like the quietest deepest corner of the house and I have bookshelves here and bookshelves all on that wall and I just kind of come in here. I have a little meditation station. You can't Aww. see all this. I have a little meditation pillow and a rug down here that I do my meditation. Oh, you know, um, I should send y'all this invitation. You know, Met and Abby that Abby that I've been to to do retreats before. Yeah, they yeah. have um, they have a little centering prayer four times a week. It's, oh. it's on Tuesday and Thursday at eight and eight. And it's like, I just did it, which is kind of why I was like, so I had to go make my smoothie. That's okay. Um, <laughs> they, they do a little, just a little prayer. You kind of stand up and do some physical readiness and mm -hmm. then you meditate for 20 minutes. Wow. And it's really, it, you know, it's a Zoom thing. So there are lots of people and you kind of feel like you're in community. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're interested, I'll send you the link. It's, it's a nice ritual for me. Yeah. Sounds very interesting. That's beautiful. Okay. I've never been to that. <laughs> I've always wanted to go. You haven't? No, not yet. So maybe even quarantine. Field trip. Time. Yeah. <laughs> They are open a little bit for visitors. You can't do the, the retreat center is not open, but mm -hmm. the, they have a little shop and mm. under normal circumstances, you can go and tour the, all the grounds. It's really beautiful. And at Christmas, they have a, um, they have a, oh my gosh, what, I can't think of what they call it. Anyway. Uh, where they have all the crashes. I guess it's just a crash festival. And they're from all over the world and they're set up, you know, some are outdoors and big life size. And then they have your mom. Has your mom ever done that, Rhonda? No, yeah, but she, she has should. an incredible She's... crash collection. Yeah, yeah she, she so many. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. From all yeah, over the world. I think counted like 60 of them. I mean, she's got Whoa. tons of them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. From all over the and world, they're, they're all different. They're all beautiful like each one is really special. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of people are doing like Christmas in July themes at their churches. I guess everybody needed a little <laughs> bit of a break from the drudgery. And so it's funny that we're talking about Christmas too. I'm gonna break That's out all the nativity cool. sets. Well, Boobalotti's did Christmas ice cream flavors. Did they? Just saying. <laughs> Peppermint <laughs> stick. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible oh that's man. pretty funny yeah yeah well thanks for passing the peace with me you guys yeah is there anything you see to, you is there anything you want to say to sundays at six folks we miss you just we miss, miss everybody. you oh my gosh so much i know you guys are doing a great job though with the services i have to i i mean it from where you started to now it's like there's they're just so enjoyable to watch, especially out in, in past years. Yeah, that was so fun. That horse would not cooperate. <laughs> he kept walking in front of you. I, I thought maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just stand behind the horse. <laughs> and, you know, I was thinking the, you should have been on the horse. No, 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 no. Well, you guys are doing a great job keeping us all yeah. informed and in the loop and it, it's just it's it's very i feel connected at least so that's really good i'm i'm thank glad you. i miss you guys i miss you all so much so much thank you christina and hopefully we'll be together soon so hope so yeah in the meantime stay safe be careful the lord said to moses now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will set them free. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of his land. 
God spoke to Moses. He said to them, I am the Lord. I was seen by Abraham, by Isaac, and by Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, the Lord, I was not known to them. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their sojournings where they had sojourned. And I have also heard the moaning of the children of Israel, whom Egypt is holding in servitude. And I have called to mind my covenant. Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am the Lord. I will bring you out from beneath the burdens of Egypt. I will rescue you from servitude to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm with great acts of judgment. I will take you for me as a people and I will be for you as a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from beneath the burdens of Egypt. I will bring you into the land over which I lifted my hand in an oath to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I, the Lord. Moses spoke these words to the children of Israel, but they did not hearken to him out of shortness of spirit and out of their hard servitude. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, go in, speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that he may send free the children of Israel from his land. Moses spoke before the Lord saying, here, if the children of Israel do not listen to me, how will Pharaoh listen to me? I am of uncircumcised lips. The Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron and charged them to the children of Israel and to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt.
it matters who did it. <laughs> I'm one of these people that love to hear the stories behind things. May the Lord have mercy on all of those people, all of the kids and children's sermon or in my own family in about 20 years when I am just lovingly getting out each of my handmade masks from a different friend and saying, let me tell you about the story of this chevron print monogrammed coronavirus face mask. I love a story behind things. Most of the things I collect, whether they're books or art or jewelry or whatever, it's because there's a story behind it. Usually it makes me think of the person who gave it to me or maybe the unique place in which I got it. It's one of the reasons why I love thrift shopping so much. There is nothing that is a greater thrill than saying, well, you like this. I get it was originally $179.99, but I got it for $3. I love hearing the story behind things and about the person who made it. Behind me is a piece of art that I brought back from Sierra Leone when I traveled there in November 2016. It's a beautiful painting of some of the traditional um, homes there in the countryside. But that it was painted by an artist who was blind. I thought I cannot do these this sort of art even with um, complete use of my eyes. And so it was amazing to me, amazing enough to, to bring this piece of art back in my suitcase, even though it got a little bit of ding, a little bit dinged up. There's something about who did it. In my office, I have many of the art pieces from our Station to the Cross, our Journey to the Cross that we have every Holy Week. It, some of them, it's just a shame to put away. And one of them is this crown of thorns. A couple years ago, we contacted Emily Lackey, one of the artists in our congregation, a painter, and asked if she could make a piece of art to represent Jesus and the crown of thorns. Sure, she said, but can my kids help too? And we said, absolutely, the more the merrier. We were expecting kind of, you know, like a Play-Doh project or, you know, a crown of thorns made out of Legos. And then when she brought it in, it was this beautiful crown that had been crafted by her three young children, all in elementary school. I love it because I know that it was made in their driveway <laughs> with a mom and her three kids, that the suffering of the crown of thorns is offset by the beautiful hints of gold around it. It's too beautiful to put away just for one week a year. I'm thinking about who gets the credit for the things that we do and who bears the burden. Moses in our scripture, like a lot of us, is faced with an enormous task. It feels maybe these days like everything is an enormous task. Everything from going to the grocery store everything from facing even another nine weeks of homeschooling one's children, of working from home, of caring from aging parents, of doing this, 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 and now this week, a tropical storm headed this way as we are filming this. It's almost too much. You can imagine how it was easy for Moses to say, I see what you're trying to get me to do, God, and I am not up to this task. <laughs> I do not have the right words. I do not have the right temperament. Moses says in the original Hebrew that he's a man of uncircumcised lips. You know, not quite so refined, not quite so religious. Some people say it's slow of speech, but I almost like it the way it is in the Hebrew better. There are reasons why we can't do this freedom work that God is calling us to do. I think about this as we are, you know, stocking up water and toilet paper, if there is any, <laughs> bread and eggs and milk for another hurricane season. As we continue to do the hard work of reckoning with racial history, as we think about what our public schools are gonna look like and our other schools, 
As we think again about how long it's going to be till we can gather together, as we look at 150,000 Americans that have lost their lives due to COVID-19, and like Moses, it is easy to say, God, we are people of uncircumcised lips. We can't win all the Facebook battles. <laughs> we can't figure out how to solve all the world's problems. Sometimes we can't even make it through the day without having a little bit of meltdown or a lot of ice cream. A couple years ago at one of our pastor's retreats, a pastor named Greg Moore gave us a grammar lesson. I love this. If you know me, you know I love grammar. It's the best parts of math mixed with the best parts of story is what English class is. But he said, don't confuse your subjects and your objects. I was intrigued. What did this have to do with the Bible? What did this have to do with theology? And it's, he said this. He said, whenever you're having a bunch of sentences and you put God in the end of the sentence, <laughs> I need to do this for God. I need to convince this person that they should be a Christian. I need to convey to them this truth. I need to make my church grow. I need to do, 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 do. I need to blank for God. He says, that's a clear sign that we've gotten it a little bit backwards. As you can see from Moses' life, if you keep reading Exodus, it is not entirely easy. Spoiler alert, but Moses doesn't even get to go into the promised land that he has been promising the people. It's a hard thing. Leadership, it's a hard thing being God's instruments of freedom and peace. It's something that we may face resistance, that we may face self-doubt. We may, as I have been many, many times since the beginning of the pandemic, either have way too many words or not enough. But what Greg Moore says, and what I see in this scripture is that make sure that God is the subject of your sentence. What does that mean? <laughs> Not literally, of course, but if you look at these verses, in verse six, I am the Lord. And then look at all the verbs. I will bring you out from beneath the burdens of Egypt. I will rescue you from servitude. I will redeem you with my outstretched arm with great acts of judgment. I will take you from me as my people. I will be for you as a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who does what? Who brings you out from beneath the burdens of Egypt. I will bring you into the land over which I lifted my hand. I will give it to you as a possession. If you want to, if you want some extra credit for English class, go through there. Look, open it up to Exodus chapter six and look at every single I will verb. <laughs> There's a lot of them. Moses, throughout his life, throughout Exodus, just as I do, and I'm guessing that maybe you do too, takes on an awful lot of responsibility. Isn't that a good thing to be responsible? Aren't we supposed to wear our masks and wash our hands and wash our hands even longer and stay at home if at all we possibly can and not lick telephone poles right now? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> But ultimately, it is both humbling, challenging, and freeing to know that I am not responsible for the world's healing, for the world's freedom. God invites me to be God's coworker, but God is the one who is setting the world free. I wonder what is the sentence that you might need to switch around in your mind. <laughs> After all, the emphasis is not necessarily supposed to be on us, even though sometimes if you're like me, you can say, well, I don't want it to be about me, so I just won't do anything. That's not quite what God is calling us to either. We may face resistance, not even because of people's ill will, but just because it is a deeply broken, sinful, suffering world. 
Look in verse 9 that Moses said all these things to the children of Israel. So cool. All right, let's get out of here. Y'all believe me. We're good. Just end this book of Exodus early. But no, it says they did not hearken to Moses out of shortness of spirit and out of hard servitude. I think I can only imagine the shortness of spirit that so many people feel right now. I feel short of spirit and you might too. Add to that many folks who are now facing evictions, now that the moratorium on evictions is lifted, people who now are out of jobs and also without unemployment, additional unemployment assistance, people who are dealing with racism or sexism or homophobia on a top of natural disasters and COVID-19. Can you imagine the shortness of spirit, the hard servitude that many might feel if they are working their 10 millionth day in a row? If you feel like you are getting nowhere <laughs> in your work to make peace, to live as a follower of Jesus in the world, maybe it is not even your burden to bear that burden of success, whatever that looks like. Maybe you can take that and you can give it to God and say, here God, you are the subject of this sentence. You are the instrument and the healer. You are the one who is making the world free. And maybe if you are feeling rejected or like your work, everything you're doing is completely in vain you keep trying things and planning things and they keep being canceled. You keep trying to do the right thing and you're faced with so many people who it feels like aren't. If people are making fun of you, are lashing out at you, etc. Remember that the prophets, that the followers of God have often been in this place where you are. You are not alone. I'm hoping that maybe just as this story is a prelude into the story of Moses, the freedom song that God was singing for the children of Israel, that just as probably the, uh, maybe the missteps that sometimes artists take in their work, uh, the challenges that they face I'm hoping that these hard times, our shortness of spirit, will maybe be part of a story of what others might be able to tell, not necessarily about what we did, but what about what God did through us. So friends, remember, <laughs> get your grammar right because it matters who did something. As we go to God in prayer, as we give to God in offering, as we share at God's table in Holy Communion, I invite you to give and to receive. <laughs> it's that rhythm of the life of being a disciple, that it is both about what we do and not about what we do. <laughs> we hold both of those things together. We are ones that give our gifts so that the world can be free. And we are the ones that receive God's gift of freedom, of salvation, of Christ's body. Because God knows that it's not really us. It's the Holy Spirit creating us, renewing us, and working through us that is making the world free. Amen.
We are praying a blessing every week at Sundays at 6, and the words to that will be found on the screen, and I invite you to pray that with me as we go. May the peace of the Lord Christ be with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.